Hi gang, it's Patrick. And Ryan. Coming up on today's episode, we explore our thoughts and opinions on Disney's 2022 animated movie, Strange World. As always, we discuss the latest Disney news, and we close out the show with some quick D. All that and more on today's episode of Gaze Do the D. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Ryan over the mountain Tucker. Ooh, I like that. That's so inspirational. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Patrick, and if the beat live, you know Lil Jupe made it. <laughs> Kaza King. <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna have to explain that one to me because I may be too old or haven't heard that lyric yet. <laughs> okay. Well, so you know how like a lot of the times when rappers have certain producers, the way that you know a certain producer produced the rap is a little intro line to songs. Sure, 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 sure. So sure, sure, sure. At the beginning of every Megan the Stallion song, she says, and if the beat live, you know, Lil Jute made it because Lil Jute is, that is, what it is? <laughs> her producer. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Who's the producer? Maybe you'll know this. There's somebody, I can't remember. This is going to age me. Everyone's going to be like, okay, Patrick, pull it together. That there, every song starts with like, this the best music. And then I'm like, okay, great. I, oh, we the best music. That's DJ something. Khaled. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> That's DJ Khaled. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'm glad that you told me. Otherwise, I wouldn't have yeah. known that this is the best Because we wouldn't have known. Exactly. That's right. No, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then I'm trying to think of what other famous ones. Oh, um, think back early 2000s with me. Hmm. Do you remember like listening to a song and all of, her, all of a sudden you hear a mustard on the beat? <laughs> that does not That's a producer. Familiar. That's hilarious. It's, yeah. So we, <laughs> we were talking the other day about like... Me and some friends, we were on a road trip to um, Gatlinburg because we were going to Dollywood together. And we were talking oh, about what would nice. be your introduction, like, clip or quip if I'm you were a producer. Okay. And most of them I cannot say unless it was a raw and uncut episode. Um, but just trust <laughs> <laughs> that there were some very creative answers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we might have to do a run and uncut and just yeah. explicitly lay down what our intro music would be or intro just lyrics would be. Really get in there. Got it. Got it. I feel like a lot of our like put some blank on it. I feel like yes, are, are mm-hmm. most of them great, 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 great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, insert well, whatever body part you want to. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what a great start. What a, already, uh, just off to a, so a wild start. We're into it. Okay. Okay. Also, it feels so funny right now because um, for our listeners, me and Patrick are recording this on Zoom. We and are. most of the time, my microphone is like attached to like a tripod. So Patrick mm. can basically with my setup, Patrick usually can only see half of my face <laughs> while we're recording the episode. But I'm trying something different today where I'm holding my microphone and it's giving very Regis Philman. It's giving yes. very um, Wheel of Fortune. Mm. It's giving um, Deal or No Deal. It is giving <laughs> Family Feud with Steve Harvey. And you know what? Honestly, I would love to be Steve Harvey. I'm into it. I'm into it. I, for a hot second, I was like, "Is Steve? Do I like Steve Harvey? Am I into the?" And but then I am. I am into Steve Harvey. I feel 100%. like percent. Well done, sir. The man has a suit for every single a- occasion. Sure does. His, his teeth look like chiclets. They're beautiful. <laughs> and not only that, but he is an unproblematic king with the mustache. His I mustache is on point for sure. Mm-hmm. For always, sure. Always. Always. Well always. done. Patrick, oh, well, how are okay. you? What's going on? What's the I was going to say, we're almost five minutes in and no Disney talk yet, but uh, we're going to continue that. Thank you for asking. I'm good. You know what? I'm <laughs> <Sorry>. really good. <laughs> no, this is, the, this is the part where we ask each other how we're doing. So we're, on, yeah. we're right on schedule. I'm good. Um, spring has sprung finally in Minnesota. Things are uh, fine. I'm so glad for you. We got we got a bunch of snow and then it all just sort of melted and turned into mud. But that's drying up, and I think we're we're on the upswing right now, which means my mood is also on the upswing too. So you're catching me on a good day, right? <laughs> oh, so are you saying that this episode is a thaw and uncut? 
It's a thaw and uncut. Okay. okay. I like it. I like it. Yeah. No, I'm, things are, things are really good. I'm in, um, I'm definitely a cyclical person in that I'm, I want to spring clean right now. I want to, like, oh, yeah, same. Purge the house of everything and start afresh. I want to just, just start all, all over again in a good way. I mean, but. I feel like spring is a, a time exactly for that. Or if you like yeah. want to reinvent yourself or if you're yeah. like, all right, we're almost halfway through the year. What do I want the second half of the year to look like? You know, things like that. It's always fun to think about. Very that, very that. How how are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's beautiful weather down here in Orlando, Florida. Mm. I've just spent the past two weeks traveling. And so um, I am super tired and my social battery <laughs> is on complete and utter E. Fair. So if you don't <laughs> see me, if you don't see or hear from me in two to three business weeks, that is why. Sure. <laughs> um, but I'm doing great. I uh, had a really great time with some of my best friends in Kentucky recently mm. in Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, which fun fact, it is the largest cave network in all of the Northern Hemisphere, I think. Ooh. Um, and I, they, like my friend group invited me to go down to the cave and I was like, no, uh, I saw the descent in high school. I'm not going in that cave. Uh, uh-uh. uh, nope. Not my not black ass. You can edit that. Um, <laughs> But um, I so I did not go in the cave, but I did eat a lot of cookies and Mm. hang out with all my friends. And then I had a work week in New York City, which was a lot of fun. I didn't get a chance to catch up with any Tweedles, any of our New York Tweedles. But sure. um, Yeah, it was still really great. So, yeah, that's all that's going on with me. I like it. She's been busy. I like it. She's been bugged. She's been busy. And now she (laughs) is taking a nap for the rest of April. Fair. Fair enough. Fair Mm -hmm. enough. Just a super quick question. Um, Mm -hmm. We all know that I think since the last episode came out, uh, Beyonce's album, the full (gasps) album, dropped. Do we need to take a minute and just recognize... Patrick, we're throwing away the show notes. We're just talking (laughs) about Beyonce's album this episode. I'm just kidding. Um... I, I'm, I, first of all, I have to say that I'm biased, Patrick, because Mm. this album is literally handcrafted for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, celebrating black country music and I'm a black person who loves country music Mm -hmm. and I'm from the geographical area that she mentioned several times throughout the song. Yes. Um, I don't want to get into the specific, I'm not going to quote exactly what she says in Jolene about herself, but I definitely <laughs> resonate um, in the same Great. way as as she did. So Great. Great. I have no notes. And I yeah. something that I think is so cool, and um, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but mm. the the beginning of the album to the end of the album is supposed to take you on a journey of country music. Right. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the album, you're almost in this genre that not a lot of people know about unless you grew up in the Delta, which is Nola bounce. Patrick, have you heard of Nola bounce before? I have actually. (laughs) Okay. Oh, perfect. So like, this is kind of the genre that big Frida was born out of, you know? Sure. Um, Sure. And I love that that whole entire journey was taken. And it was just a reminder that there have been so many different forms of music that originated in country music Mm. and country music originated with black people. So that part, um, that part right there, (laughs) the the fact that Beyonce does this whole entire study on this. And there's a lot of imagery in a lot of the photo shoots that she's released. For example, the horse that she's riding in the album it's Mm -hmm. black when it's born and then it's fur turns white and Mm. it's white in the picture you know of the album Mm -hmm. artwork Mm -hmm. symbolizing the fact that country music got whitewashed so i you know i'm sure you have some disney history for us eventually (laughs) so i'm just gonna stop right there to just say this album is amazing yeah if you don't like it then I was going to say something extreme, but we're not even going to do that Listen. because so- this is a space of psychological safety. And that's if you right. have differing opinions, that is totally okay. That's we right. all have opinions. Um, <laughs> 
but I will say yours are wrong if you don't like this album. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get. It. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a one. It is. A, I, I'm not historically a big country music fan, um, but I think I think this album made me explore why, and and I feel like the the country music I don't like is the whitewashed country music. You know what yeah. I mean? Like country music where it's I don't know. It's it's almost a little problematic country music in my opinion yeah. sometimes. Um, but then, you know, I just implore all of you, even if it's not your jam, that's okay. Yeah. It, just explore the history of it because it's really interesting, the journey that she takes and the songs that she's covering and the songs that she's creating and the version of Blackbird is so good. I, I didn't oh, know. Oh, the version of Blackbird. Yeah. So I didn't know or I had forgotten, I guess, that the, the Beatles who created the song Blackbird, it, it's about civil unrest and the civil rights movement mm-hmm. in in america a lot of people don't know that so just look at the history of these songs she's she's teaching the children with this album she's and it's amazing teaching the children it is spectacular yeah i also love that she's lifting up other black country artists right now yes. so for those yep. who don't know there's a a recent rise in black country artists being represented um but unfortunately mm-hmm. because of other socio <laughs> dynamics of the country music genre they don't get as many listens to as some of the other more stereotypical country artists so Mm. definitely while you're listening to the album make sure you go take a look to see who's featured and go support those artists as well um one of the artists her name is britney spencer and uh she used to actually work for my company i was her recruiter in Mm. nashville whenever i lived there and she left my company because she was going on tour with jason isbell no big deal and uh, now she is on Beyonce's album. So I wish her Amazing. the world. She is one of the most talented people that I've ever gotten to meet. And I'm really excited for her. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. And, you know, before we move on, like, if you're going to take one message from this album and from, like, what Beyonce has done over the last 10, 15 years, don't put yourself in a box because don't nobody lives uh, in a box. And 100%. you get to sing whatever music you want to sing whenever you want to sing it. Doesn't Nobody gets to tell you what kind of album you're going to put out and what kind of person you're going to be today or tomorrow or yesterday. So <laughs> 100%. And I feel like she does such a great job of mentioning that in some of her notes and statements that she's released Mm, um mm -hmm. she said like uh, many people have shared with me that i don't belong in this genre because it's country music and she said this isn't a country album it's a beyonce album (laughs) and she kind of took the genre melted it with several other components of blues and r&b and everything else and absolutely made this delicious parfait that is cowboy carter it's great. It's great. So I celebrate it. Good. It sounds like you celebrate the hell out of it as well. Yes. I love it. I love it. Well, let's continue that celebration, Ryan, and celebrate our Tweedles. All right. Let's get into some Tweedle celebrations. It's bam, a bam, celebration. Bam. It's a celebration. <laughs> Kick us off, Ryan. Who, who are we celebrating first? Okay. Well, you know, we have to talk about this dreamboat every time he writes in. Okay, at Sean Cruz, <laughs> yes. the completion of our chorus spring show, and it was boy band themed. I saw Wonderful. videos on Sean's Instagram story of all yeah. of the great choreography that he was popping off with. Way to go, Sean. You killed it. Well done, Sean. We also have at and evens our ex celebrating going to a friend's wedding with my new boy friend. Okay, he's I love cooked. this. A little, a little behind the scenes. Uh, two episodes ago, I think mm-hmm. uh, he was celebrating uh, a guy that he was interested in. <gasps> and now this guy is his boyfriend. I think <gasps> thanks to us. I think thanks that to Gates. So D. sweet. Yeah, that makes love me it. so. Happy. You better love it. You better go. You got you some <laughs> spring loving. Okay. All right. I love um, it. He's Twitter pated, like in Bambi. He is Twitter pated, period. <laughs> um at run.dive.jwr taking a trip to Cowie this afternoon and maybe watching the Eras tour on the plane. Justin, how did you get the life that you have and how can I also live it? And why are we not on this trip with you? I mean... Real questions. Yeah. Yeah. Real questions. Um, I hope that you have an amazing time in Cowie. Please report back. I hope you do all the Black Sand beaches. And if you Mm. visit Alani, please let us know. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Super hype for you. 
Love it. Have so much fun. Next up, we have at jdon1031, who's my friend Justin, who I talk about a lot on the podcast, celebrating winning Office March Madness, forced to make a bracket, and people expected me to lose. Don't discount the gays. If you include a gay in your March Madness, they're going to win. I promise you this every time. Oh, every absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah. One thing that gays love more than pop music is <laughs> strategy. Strategy. We are going to figure out some way to win, mm-hmm. come hell or high water. So, if it's what's the best go. mascot, who has the best outfits, whatever mm-hmm. it needs to happen, we're going to mm-hmm. win this bracket. We're going to make it happen. So, Correct. congrats on winning March Madness and well defeating done. all of the stereotypes that were thrown at you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> at Steve Achu. Exciting new job opportunities. Steve Achu writes in parentheses, yes, vague, not enough characters, parentheses, XOXO. I know this man did not XOXO gossip girl us <laughs> just did. now. Gossip Achu. Gossip Achu. Mm-hmm, okay, well, mm-hmm. S- Steve Achu, you better cut me a check a check a chew since check you got some new job opportunities. <laughs> Give me a and sign on. Let us know what that job Achu is. Achu. Yeah, I want to know what the there job at you is. Mm-hmm. More information, please. Y'all, just just because it doesn't fit in the box that we have, you can DM us a full a fuller c- celebrating. Have no fear. We will, we I will speak all your truth. I will read the whole entire thing. I will. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Write us a book. We'll read it. Test us. Mm-hmm. I dare you. Uh, moving on, we have at Jedi Trousers celebrating. Ooh, this is a spoiler if you are watching Drag Race UK versus the World and haven't finished it yet, but celebrating Tia Coffee winning Drag Race UK versus the World. I love her. I, I love Tia Coffee. Love Tia Coffee. One thing that I love because I don't mean to, but I take myself so seriously is I love <laughs> when people know how not to. And I feel like Tia mm-hmm. Coffee is the master of that. I mean, just her name alone, Tia Coffee. Mm-hmm. And she's so mm-hmm. funny. I hope she's, she's so in the next, naturally like, funny. Do you know what I mean? Like she just is, yeah. she feels really like comfortable in her skin, which I love to see. She's not trying so hard that it feels desperate. She's just naturally exuberant. You know, one hundo. Well, congrats, mm. Tia, and congrats mm-hmm. to Juin. As it sounds like that you were also excited that Tia won. Yes. Let's see at John underscore Waylon. I feel like that that's like a speaking of country music. I feel like that that is a, a country music star right there, John Waylon. I like it, John yeah. Waylon of of the Salem Waylon podcast, who was mm-hmm. recently uh, was on our show a couple years ago. Not recently. It's been too long. Oh my gosh. Too long too long john come back to us Mm -hmm. flights are booked to visit my boyfriend in australia my first time down under hopefully it's not your last oh my stars oh my stars (laughs) congratulations john yeah that was a loaded sentence that was a really loaded sentence but Mm -hmm. i liked it Mm -hmm. i was into it i was interested in Mm -hmm. it and well done Mm -hmm. all these boyfriends coming on the pod i like this yeah everybody's cuffed up and i do you know what and it's not even cuffing season it sure isn't. And it's okay if you're not boyfriended up or girlfriended up. But we love to celebrate love. So that's right. Because if you can't you. date yourself, how in the hell are you going to date somebody else? Can I get an amen? Amens. Amens, Ryan. And last but not least, we have Phil Toasties. Phil Toasties uh, celebrating. Okay. Y'all celebrating doing a cruise with my boyfriend and hopefully bow, 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 proposing to him. Come on. This is the week of love. I'm into this. I feel like we need to be involved somehow in this engagement celebration. I agree. I know. think that we need to be involved. Feel free to I um will jump on FaceTime for anyone for around $358. <gasps> Are we doing a cameo engagement? Yeah. I like this. Why not? $358. My Venmo is at Rhinosaurus. Such a specific number. I need to know what costs $358. Um, Fees. (laughs) Fees mainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Don't worry about what it's for. Don't ask questions. Just send $358. Yes. Um, Do you think all this love is in the air because of the eclipse? Do you think that any of this aligns astrologically? Um, sure. Why not? Why ever not? I'll just go with it. Yes, it sure does. And I'm interested. I'm interested in more. 
I'm Isn't Mercury interested. in like retrograde right now or something? Is that what's happening I, right now? I think so, but I think because it is in retrograde in a specific sign. Now, I don't know for sure. I don't mm. think this Mercury retrograde is a bad one. Okay. Okay. I think okay. Mercury might be in Gatorade, but it's the glacier cherry flavor, you know, the white <laughs> one. And that's the best I that's the best Gatorade flavor, so I think we're good. Okay. I will I will support that. I will support that. We have to have at least one astrology major on uh, who's listening to the podcast right now. Yeah. Let us know. Let us know if we're talking just straight out of our bottoms or if we know what we're talking about. Let us know. I think I think we know what we're talking about loosely. Okay. <laughs> I need a t-shirt that says that. I know what I'm talking about loosely. <laughs> loosely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Obsessed. Well, thank you, everybody, for sending us your celebrations. We love to loosely celebrate all of you, apparently. Mm-hmm. Now, moving on, Ryan, we have some listener feedback. We had a few people respond to our last episode, the Fab Five non-leading ladies in Disney canon. Uh, first yes. up, we have Tanko Direct, uh, his top five list is number five, Meriwether, of course, a fairy, love it. Number four, Lady Cluck, a uh, uh, genius, genius Lady Cluck. I am so mad I didn't think about Lady Cluck. Number three, Roz. Number two, The Muses. Again, I'm so upset I didn't think about The Muses. And number one, Edna Mode. What a great list. Well done. That is such a good list. Now, I'm a little bit behind on my podcast episodes because I have been around people so much. So I'm just catching up was this is technically a Disney princess, but I guess she would still fall into this category of Mm -hmm. non leading ladies. Did anybody mention Princess Kira from Atlantis? Because that's my submission. Neither Kale nor I did, but I think um, as we move on into our listener feedback, somebody mentions at least the cast of yes that movie. okay 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 Great but you're not wrong movie Great um movie. princess kira hottest disney princess and i'm not even straight i said what i said <laughs> anyhow at <add> jedi trousers <laughs> yes yes <laughs> at jedi trousers jessica rabbit has to be my number one that mm. first scene of her singing in the club rearranged my brain whenever i was saw it as a kid <laughs> iconic also very much agree with winifred banks i also have to include mrs potts fairy godmother captain amelia and every family side character in atlantis the lost or every female side character in atlantis the lost empire 100 percent. what's her name the mechanic Ooh, i can't oh my gosh i need to rewatch that movie it's been so long that it like it doesn't stick in my brain all the characters names now whatever her name is let me tell you something patrick whatever her name is is Whatever her name is, I'm as gay as the days are long, right? But there's something about a masculine lady that really does it for me. And she Mm. is everything. Just throwing around those wrenches and Mm -hmm. telling people what to do. I love it. Into it. Into it. It mm-hmm. well, thank you, Jedi Trousers. Thank you, Juin. Moving on, our last listener feedback is from at ADV Parker, and they say there are so many wonderful and powerful women in the Disney canon, and the way you highlighted them in this episode made me so happy. Oh, all of your picks were superb. I know, right? And there was quite <laughs> a bit, <laughs> quite a bit of crossover in my own list. So my Fab Five would be Lottie from Princess and the Frog. Okay, Colette from Ratatouille. I I can't believe I didn't think about Colette. Edna Mode, uh, Roberta from Swiss Family Robinson, great choice, and uh, Tanana from Brother Bear. And yes, we <gasps> do need a take two of that film, he says. I oh. know so many people are begging us to do Brother Bear, so I think we, we have to do it. Can you please save it until I'm back? Absolutely. I would in particularly, I would in particular love to do that episode. You get to call dibs right now on Brother Bear. I love Brother Bear. What a great movie. I still remember going to see that movie with my dad in theaters. And it was like Mm. one of my, I was in the sixth grade and sixth grade is just terrible. And (laughs) I remember loving that movie. Yeah. So that's awesome. Well, I think that this will be a great idea for you and I to do Brother Bear because I don't love Brother Bear so much and you do Mm. love it. So we'll have some good conversation on it. But I do need to rewatch it again. It's been so long since I've seen it that maybe maybe it just wasn't for me when I saw it. And now it is for me. We'll see. We got to talk about it. I cannot wait. Yes. Yes, Queen. Yes, Queen. Well, thank you, listeners, for your feedback. Uh, Anyone that you think we may have missed, Ryan, on this list anyways of non-leading ladies? You already mentioned... um, 
uh, now I can't remember. Kiera, is that who you mentioned? Oh, Princess Kira. Um, yeah. Definitely Princess Kira is up there. And then another leading lady that I feel like gets slept on mm. all the time, everywhere. We don't give Daisy her flowers enough. Daisy Duck. Interesting. I like that. See, now I do consider Daisy a leading lady, but you're right oh, in that interesting. she's she's not included in the Fab Five, obviously, right? Yeah. So, so maybe she does does count as a non-leading lady because she's not included in fab five i want more daisy merch because daisy, Always. daisy is a fruit fly daisy loves the gays <laughs> yes <laughs> i'm not saying that Minnie doesn't love the gays but we know daisy loves the gays like daisy is yeah. out on the dance floor at the gay bar with all yeah. her best friends mm-hmm. listening to rush by troy savon and being like who is this i love him that's daisy <laughs> yeah Daisy has pure advocacy for the gays, mm-hmm, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And we love uh, it. We do. We do love it. All right, before we get into the news, Ryan, we have some This Week in Disney history. Are you ready for your quiz? I'm ready to learn. Let's do some learning. <laughs> I'm ready for my quiz. Let's get learned. Okay, so on April 8th, 1984, for Ryan, celebrating her 40th birthday this year, actress okay. Kirsten Storms was born in Orlando, Florida. Now, Storms' okay. biggest claim to fame was as a child actor on the Disney Channel, specifically playing the title role in this 1999 original Disney Channel movie, which at the time had the largest rating for any Disney Channel original movie, which also then spawned two sequels. Do you know that movie? Of course I do. Oh, what is it? I'm ready. Oh, we love a hometown queen, first of all. Second of all, Xenon, girl of the 21st century. <laughs> yes. You knew this right away. You were like, I'm, I, I'm on this. <laughs> I'm on it. Um, do you want to know what else Kristen is uh, like famous for? Mm. She was on Days of Our Lives for like a thousand seasons. Was it Days of Our Lives? I knew she was on a soap opera. I couldn't remember which yeah. one it was, though. I think okay. I'm fairly certain it was Days of Our Lives. It was either Days of Our Lives or General Hospital. Ooh, that's, yeah. Maybe maybe she was on both. I don't know. But maybe I, I, sure she was a big soap star, yeah. Big soap star. I love her. It's Xenon, like, that was a cornerstone of me being a homosexual as a child. <laughs> like, that, I used to say Zeta Sepetus all the time. I used oh to be gosh. like, ugh. That hurts major, you know, like all of the little hurts major, yes, the little like lingo that they throw into that movie. Absolutely. And to this day, I will still zoom, 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 make my heart go boom, boom. That's super fair enough. Girl. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. I feel like we need a remake of that song. Somebody big needs to like redo that song and bring it out. Absolutely. Right? I would love like a, you know how they have like the punk goes pop or, um, <laughs> All of those different albums or like rock goes R&B where they Mm. like remake songs into a different genre. We need like a, I want a screamo version of Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Into it. Super into that. Taking back Sunday. That's taking back (laughs) Sunday singing Zoom. (laughs) That sounds amazing. That's my quick D answer as well. I love it. (laughs) I love it. Episode over. Bye. Bye, we're done. Oh, all right. Well, moving on. Before we do that, moving on to our second piece, we have another birthday to celebrate mm-hmm. okay. uh, on April 9th, 1954. So, celebrating 70th birthday, born in Houston, birthday. Texas. Mm-hmm. Uh, H-Town, baby. <laughs> this uh, this man for Disney starred in the 2002 live action movie The Rookie. He also played the dad in the remake of Disney's The Parent Trap, and he also happens to play Jagger Clade in Strange okay. World. Who is this man, Ryan? Um, can I get a yeehaw for Dennis Quaid? Yeehaw, indeed, you can, Dennis. Dennis Quaid. Can I? Can I say Dennis Quaid is still foin? As still all get so out. hot. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. He does not look... I mean, like, listen, 70 is not that old, but he does not look 70 by any stretch of the imagination. Listen, if Dennis called me today, I'd be <laughs> like, listen, Dennis, on the way, sharing my location. <laughs> <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. I'm on my zoom, way. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Dennis Quaid. <laughs> Dennis Quaid makes my heart go boom, boom, boom. <laughs> My supernova man. 100%. Oh, 
All the way. All the way. Love it. Well done. 100% for you today on this week Thank in Disney you. history. Thank well you. This done. is the first time. I'm, I'm into it. This is gonna, it's going to be a great episode. I can already, It's already been a great episode. It's just going to get better from here on out. Uh, we love uh, to see it. We love to see it. And let's head into the news, Ryan. What do you say? Let's head over to some news. <laughs> All right, kicking it off with our first news story. Um, title of this news story is Walt Disney World Files Permits for a Drone Show. Buckle up, everyone. Um, both permits <laughs> are for Disney Spring addresses around Lake Buena Vista and contracted Lakeland Blaze Jim Williams Fence Company. Um, the first permit is for installing an 870 870- foot beta fence in five gates. The second permit is for installing a 250 foot chain link fence with scrim. These seem to be the paddocks for the storage and launch of the drones that will be used in Disney dreams that soar. The new show will be performed at above Lake Buena Vista on the west side of Disney Springs from May 24th through September 2nd, 2024. Patrick, this is so exciting on uh, multitudes of reasons. Number one, <sighs> A show in Disney Springs. I I think yeah. that Disney Springs definitely needs a nighttime spectacular. One hundred percent. Number two, drones. Crazy. It's 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 weird. I, okay, so yes, I love that they are doing a drone show. It's weird that they're doing it in Disney Springs first, though. And I love that they're doing a Disney Springs show, mm-hmm. but putting it there first seems odd to me, unless they're just testing it. Of course. Yeah, it is interesting to think about because you would think they would add some type of drone element to maybe Happily Ever After or sure. that given that Epcot has a brand new fireworks show that they would work in the drones to that show. But mm-hmm. I also wonder if that's because like, is there any issues with firing off fireworks around drones at the same time? Maybe, maybe that's why. Oh, interesting. I'm mm-hmm. not, I'm not sure. So, so you've been to Disneyland Paris and you've seen the drone show there, haven't you? Or did, was it going at that time? Yes. I saw the drone show at Disneyland Paris and it was also okay. my first drone show ever in my life. And sure. It was hard to compute in my mind. Like I saw it <laughs> and I was like, that's not real. Yeah, yeah, was, absolutely. Was, yeah, so I'm so excited about this. Um, yeah. Seeing the drones in Disneyland Paris, I had never really considered how drones could be added to any Disney-type show. But seeing mm-hmm, how mm-hmm. they did the drones in Paris, it just really opened my eyes to all of the possibilities when it comes to drones and Disney IP. I think they could really yeah. run with this in a lot of different ways, especially for a lot of characters that um, kind of WDW is their kind of home base. Um, I think mm-hmm. it would be really, really cool. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, for sure. Now, in Disneyland Paris, was there fireworks as well as the drones or was it just drones and like lasers and, and what have you? Great question. So the fire, so the drones and the lasers came first. And then after mm. the drone show was over, then the fireworks started. But I'm sure there's you. some way, somehow, to be able to launch fireworks and fly drones at the same time. <laughs> right. Yeah, you would think. But who, who knows? I don't get paid that well. Fair. <laughs> yeah. To know the answer. Very to exciting though. I'm I'm super interested. Yeah, I'm super interested to know what this is gonna be. Yeah. Um but it sounds like I mean, like if it's if it's going up already in May, that's next month that they're yeah. gonna do this. That's quick. That's wild. Yeah. But I guess when it comes to drones, you probably it's probably less work. You know what I mean? Like you probably just like do a pre programming, run the show once, and if it works, then let's do it. Sure. You know? Yeah. I mean I, I assume they've been like rehearsing it somewhere else in some hidden location for a long yeah, time and then probably put it there. But well, more to come, more to come. And and hopefully we'll get you um, on the ground as a reporter and, yes. and get some film of this for us. I will be on the ground. I really should film like a, a reel or something like that for our Instagram account where I'm like pretending that I'm like on the ground. I have right. a microphone too. <laughs> that would be so funny. Coming to you live from Disney Springs. Coming That's to you Ryan. live. Next hurricane, <laughs> I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't endorse that. I can't endorse yeah. you being outside during a hurricane. But but if you do it, that is on you. And that we is will on put me. it on the air. Okay. Yep. 
<laughs> All right. Well, moving on to some less exciting, but nonetheless interesting news. This past Wednesday, April 3rd, Disney held its annual shareholders meeting where a message of renewed strength was shared out to um, to the community. CEO Bob Iger started the meeting by thanking the shareholders for their, quote, trust and confidence in Disney by reelecting all 12 of the current board members and not electing self-appointed nominees, Tryon and Blackwells, who had plans to sh- to stir things up at the company, which included suggesting Disney use AI to create characters and stories and potentially ousting Bob Iger as the CEO. Their plans failed, and as I said, all 12 of the current board members still hold their seats. At least as of this recording, counting might still be happening, but it seems like it's it's a sure thing. Iger then went on to reinforce his plan for growth within the Disney company, saying, quote, as we gather today, we stand on a far more solid foundation, which has been fortified by our ambitious course of action over the past year. We are once again building our businesses for growth. We have turned the corner and entered a new positive era for the Walt Disney Company, end quote. Iger also highlighted the four key priorities within this new growth strategy, the first one being reinvigorating creativity at Disney's film studios. Now, for this category, Iger highlighted Disney's recent wins at the Oscars and the Emmys and called attention to the upcoming slate of movies, including Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, Deadpool and Wolverine, Alien Romulus, Mufasa the Lion King, Inside Out 2, and Moana 2, all of which are scheduled for 2024 releases. So here's the thing, Mm. is that Bob Iger can't be like, hey, y'all have to stop being woke, but then also... (laughs) Think about how you can be creative in your storytelling. Get you get one mm. or the other, Bob. Yeah, he has been giving some mixed messaging lately. I feel like, and I don't know what the reason is for that. You bring up a really good point. Yeah, there's there's lots more to unpack there. I feel like in what all of this messaging is about, especially. I think he is staying really far away from that not yeah. being woke comment. He, I think, he realized. Oh, I maybe didn't. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. So, but he did say it and we're not going to forget any time to, anytime soon, but that's right. We're not. I'm mad at Bob. Mm. And the only way that he can make it better is if he takes his shirt off for me. That's what I Fair. have to say about that. Doable. Do a uh, ball. I am a major stakeholder. As we all know. <laughs> <laughs> we do. We really do. We really and do. <laughs> I motion. Yeah. Um, that he simply take a shirt off and also take okay. back all of his comments about the underpaid workers and woke mm. and then i'm like okay bob i'll i'll get back on your train fair enough i can second that motion yeah. for sure yeah what else happened well moving on so the second uh sort of pillar in this four pillar strategy uh is achieving sustained profitability in streaming so here Iger highlighted the current success with disney plus offering classics and new programming he called out moana's recent achievement of hitting more than one billion that's billion with a b hours of streaming on disney plus that is insane it's insane. It's so that's everyone's watching Moana again, apparently. So he also uh, tied this new strategy. It's not a new strategy, but their strategy is like sustain what they're doing now and not take a dip, uh, which is tied to the third pillar, uh, which is positioning ESPN for the future and turning it into the the preeminent digital sports platform um so highlighted in this strategy the third uh, strategy uh is a plan to create a new streaming service which would combine the sports portfolios of espn fox and warner brothers discovery uh Iger said quote this new service will provide consumers more of the sports they want in a single place including content from all the major professional sports leagues and college sports all, so that's a mouthful, but so more sports apparently is what we're getting as well. Jadon 1031 might win him another, uh, another <laughs> bracket. <laughs> that's right. That's absolutely. Justin, if you're listening, you can uh, join more brackets. Uh, moving on then to the last pillar 
which is turbocharging growth in the company's experiences business, including domestic and international parks and the Disney Cruise Line. So here, Iger talked a little bit more about the offerings we've been reporting on for the past uh, several many uh, episodes, including a partnership with Epic Games to create more video game content using current and future Disney IP. He also talked about the recent openings of World of Frozen in Hong Kong, Zootopia in Shanghai, and the soon-to-be-opened Fantasy Springs in Tokyo Disney Sea. He also drummed up some excitement for Disneyland, announcing that the Disneyland Forward Project will go to the Anaheim City Council for final approval later this month, which would expand Disneyland even further, bringing in new lands like another Avatar experience. Iger then closed out the meeting with a message of responsibility, saying, quote, Our company, like storytelling, has always been a force for good in the world. That's why Disney is dedicated to conducting our businesses with clarity of purpose and a deep sense of integrity as we strive to have a positive impact in the communities in which we operate, end quote. So here, he highlighted Disney's work in children's hospitals around the world, the Disney Heroes to Work Here initiative, which has resulted in hiring more than 13,000 veterans. He also talked about the Disney Aspire program, which covers tuition for eligible hourly and part-time Disney employees. And of course, he uh, talked about Disney's partnership with Make-A-Wish, which has to date granted more than 150,000 wishes to children facing critical illnesses. And he closed out the meeting with this quote, saying, all of this ongoing work is part of our overarching commitment to being a responsible citizen of the world. So I think this is a little bit what you were hinting at earlier, Ryan. I, I think that he's trying to, in in a and as he should be, covering his tracks for some 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 past I don't know misspeakings that he's yeah. had on the community. Uh, you better, Bob. So listen, I I applaud the effort to 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 sort of right the wrong, but uh, yeah, the messaging has has really been sort of up and down lately with Bob Iger. I don't yeah I don't know. I just want to zoom in on this quote that he said, our company like storytelling has always been a force for good in the world. That's why Disney is dedicated to conducting our businesses with clarity of purpose and a deep sense of integrity as we strive to have a positive impact in the communities in which we operate. You literally can't do that without being inclusive. So take that, Bob. Sorry, I'm bringing us down. I'm just I'm just trying to hold the man accountable and get him to take a shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> I'm objectifying and everyone canceled. this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I am objectifying everyone this episode. No one is safe and I need to get it in. I need to no, not get it in. I need to rein it in. <laughs> that is absolutely staying in the episode, my friend. <laughs> Sorry to tell you. <laughs> Ryan, I have to admit right at the top of this segment that I have a little bit of GDTD shame in that it has taken us this long to cover Strange World. Oh, same, 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 same. (laughs) Um, But I also think, unfortunately, and I don't know if it was due to current events or what in the world was Mm -hmm. going on, but it also feels like everybody else is just now getting to the point of watching Strange World, too. So I think that we're okay. You're not wrong. Yeah, you're not wrong in yeah. that it's 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 such an it, i um i have just seen it for the first time you actually saw it right correct me if i'm yeah. wrong in in theaters when it did come out because you're a good gay and you uh, do the thank responsible you. thing mm-hmm. thank, thank you. you so much thank you for your services and so now this was your second time watching it yeah. and a lot of people this is a very polarizing movie some people just absolutely did not 
care about it and just didn't see it. Um, yeah. Some people absolutely saw it and didn't care for it. And some people absolutely saw it and loved it. So like, there's almost three <laughs> spectrums happening here of people. Just, it's not on their radar at all, or it is in a good or bad way. Uh, so 100%. an interesting movie. Yeah, an interesting movie for Disney in that respect. It's not what they want. They don't want that polarization. They want success, obviously, or at least... Um, people who like notoriety at least people who know about it but a lot yeah. of people totally slept on and forgot about strange world including us including gays through the day i personally feel like if you're i don't think that you're making creative enough movies if your movies aren't polarizing you know mm. if if they're not polarizing then you fall into a formula in which people <laughs> predict exactly what's going to happen yeah and because people really like the familiar right if if, you, if nobody is giving you any type of Re, like constructive feedback then mm. you may just be like hanging out and not really <laughs> pushing the envelope and challenging yourself yeah i fell into the watch it the first time and loved it mm -hmm. i will say it was very unexpected i wasn't expecting it to go in the direction that it went in but yeah. i really enjoyed it and i've also found like movies like this where you may where you like question things existentially you know mm. like for example this the eternals anything that is like very avant-garde and you have to think about like the world as a bigger space i feel like sure. that people get nervous in that area of thought so therefore they're going to dismiss any movie that tries to go there you know like for example the um the eternals right you have this hierarchy of like you have humans and then you have i guess within the mcu technically mutants and then you have gods right like thor and and loki and all of them mm. and then you have like celestials which are like okay <laughs> That's cool, but if you're like if you're somebody that has like a religion minor like you, me, I'm like, where does this fit in? You know, like, yeah. where are we at the in the hierarchy of creation? And um, I think that that is the same thing that a strange world did to some people, and mm. I think that that's where it lost like part of the Disney crowd. I guess it's an interesting point. So let's put a pin in that for a second. I want to come back. Yeah, to that because we'll come I, back to it. Uh, I, uh, I really want to explore that a, a little bit. So this was released in November, 2022. Didn't do great in the box office. We'll, we'll get there in a second here. It was conceived way back in 2017 though, by the director, Don Hall, who thought of this sort of a plot while finishing up the movie Moana, which he was, um, and also a, a director for that. He drew inspiration from pulp magazines and stories like Journey to the Center of the Earth, Fantastic Voyage, King Kong, and Jurassic Park, which you can absolutely see, um, in this movie. It's this, yeah, sure. it, like, like you were saying, it's these very like fantastical ideas that it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around until you actually get into it and see it um mm -hmm. so it was a hard task already i would i would have to imagine that just submitting this plot to disney i, f I wonder if it was sort of a fight to get this movie made in the first place because they I'm aren't gonna say it probably it's was. not generally yeah it's not generally a disney animated movie if I, in my opinion, it didn't like fit into the category of a Disney animated classic movie. Um, for but sure. That's good. I'm, I'm, I applaud them for at least taking this swing, um, at this movie. The plot that was online, I didn't love. It didn't really tell us anything. So I wrote out one. Do you want to tell the children at home sort of this loose plot of the movie? Yeah. Let me jump into it. So Jaeger Claude okay, great. and, um, Jaeger Clade, sorry, I mispronounced his last name and his son Searcher <laughs> are on a mission to reach the other side of the mountains in their homeland of Avalonia. On this mission, Searcher discovers a green plant that gives off energy. Rather than continue the mission, he decided to head back home with his new discovery, while Jaeger continued on never to be seen again. 25 years later, Searcher's discovery has led Avalonia into a new era of technology, which is fantastic, using the green plant called Pando. However, something is slowly destroying the plant's root system, and Searcher and his family head out on an adventure to save the plant and Avalonia. Now, I'm sure 
everybody is already thinking. If you haven't watched the movie, you're already like, this plot is a little far-fetched, right? And <laughs> it gets a little weird. I'm not going to lie. I think yeah. um, we will – hold on. Let me tell you a little bit about the movie first before we go into critiques. How about that? Great. <laughs> okay. So the movie was made with a budget of around $180 million, so big dollars, um, mm-hmm. but it only grossed about $73 million worldwide, making it one of Disney's biggest box office, office failures in history. I think that there are several conditions as to how this occurred. Mm. I, if I remember correctly, you know, we were just, we were still, this was still pandemic Lovato times, you know, I think that we had all been vaccinated at this point, but there was still a lot of reasons why people weren't going to the movies yet. And Mm -hmm. I think also, um, if I don't remember, if I remember correctly, Disney had released something pretty closely around the time that this came out. And I felt like there was more press about the other movie. And then this on the backside was like, oh, yeah, we have another movie coming out, too. Yeah, I think what well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Black Panther 2 was still in theaters around this I time. I think so. I think yeah. you're right. And it was crushing it in the theaters. Black Panther 2 was doing really well. And so I think it sort of eclipsed this movie. Yeah, I think you're correct. Um, But it it was considered one of the biggest box office failures in history, but that's okay. A lot of the best movies in (laughs) in cinema history were flops when they very first came out. It's true. Known as cult classics, and then people, they gained a lot of love after the fact. And I think that this is going to be that movie. I think 10 years from now, people are going to realize how smart this movie was. Um, Mm. It was directed by Don Hall, who directed Mm -hmm. Big Hero 6, Moana, and Raya and the Last Dragon. First of all, three absolutely action-packed, amazing Disney films. And it's written by Kui Nguyen, um, who wrote She Kills Monsters and Raya and the Last Dragon. Some folks in the cast, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal played Searcher Clade. If you don't know who Jake Gyllenhaal is, then you (laughs) do not relate to me, because I would... (laughs) Used to Google that man. Um, <laughs> he was in Roadhouse, Ambulance, Spider Man, Far From Home, and of course, one of his most famous roles, Brokeback Mountain. Um, Dennis Quaid, who we just talked about earlier. Um, mm-hmm. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Dennis Quaid That's makes right. our heart go boom, boom. Our supernova Every boy day. played mm-hmm. Jaeger Clade. Um, and Dennis has been in a lot. A Dog's Journey, Footloose, G.I. Joe, Yours, Minds, and Hours, um, Far From Heaven, Dinner with Friends, Traffic, which I don't think I realized that he was in Traffic. Um, mm-hmm. And the day after tomorrow, um, my favorite memory of Dennis Quaid was him <laughs> being the dad in the parent trap. I thought that he was yeah. so dreamy. Yeah, um, true story. Also, in this movie, Jabuki Young White played Ethan Clade. Jabuki has played um, roles and is a really huge up and coming star. Mm-hmm. Black Mem- Mirror, Only Murders in the Building, Ralph Breaks the Internet, and Big Mouth. Um, funny story before Jabuki got into acting, he was a huge internet personality, and that's kind of what started his career. And did mm-hmm. you know that Jabuki. Um, uh, pretended to be Donald Trump on Twitter and that got his Twitter account like deactivated. Oh he no. Had the blue, he had the blue check mark and everything. And then he changed his profile and everything to Donald Trump. Oh my God. <laughs> it was like tweeting these outrageous things. And of course, Twitter like was like, you can't be doing that. Oh, and dear. this was back in, when Trump had a Twitter account as well. Right. It was just wild. But anyways, <laughs> I just love that about him. That's and then funny. Gabrielle Ewan played uh, Meridian Clade. Um, and Gabrielle is from the new version of Cheaper by the Dozen, mm-hmm. The Lion Guard, uh, Cadillac Records, Bad Boys 2, and maybe Gabrielle's most famous role that she looks exactly the same 25 years ago as she does now and yes. bring it on uh, we also had lucy Liu from who played castillo mall um lucy Liu, of course fury of the gods kung fu panda mulan 2 kill bell charlie's angels the list goes on mm-hmm. and karen um sony played caspian um and karen was in mira royal detective big mouth always be my maybe deadpool in deadpool 2 so this was a stacked cast. And it I really yeah. shows how much of a banger they thought it was going to be if it was 180 million and they were able to get this cast to sign on. And yeah. even though it was a box office flop, Patrick, something that I find interesting yeah. is even though not a lot of people went to go see this movie, it mm-hmm. didn't get necessarily bad reviews. It didn't. No. Um it the critics 
didn't hate the movie. They they you know it's it, it has currently a seventy two percent on Rotten Tomatoes, which is not bad. I mean, it's a no, pretty right. decent score with a sixty six percent audience score. However, which is a little bit on the low side. You don't really want to see anything below seventy for um for an audience score. But yeah, critics didn't pan it necessarily i think people just didn't know what to do with this movie when it came out if that makes sense it just wasn't fitting into like the social conversation at the time i agree and i think i think that if it would have came out this year instead of 2022 i think Mm. i think that what we wanted in 2022 was escapism and Mm. not necessarily watching a movie that has implications of um, you know, climate change and our effects on our environment and how um, mm-hmm. we live in a world that is living and breathing and we are the ones that are devastating it. I think we mm-hmm. wanted something that's more like slap happy, uh, you know, silly fart jokes. We needed a break from COVID, <laughs> right? And I think if yeah. this movie would have came out this year as questions about uh, the climate crisis and us being aware of our impact on the world and the conversations about electric vehicles being nationwide by hopefully like 2035, um, mm. I think that this would have been much more successful at this time now. I don't disagree with you. Here, here's what I was thinking when I was watching the movie: is that I actually, I, I did like the movie. I, I did like the writing. I liked the messaging. I liked the characters. What I think was tough for me, and I imagine this was tough for a lot of people who hadn't seen it yet. Obviously, no one saw it when it first came out. Obviously, it's a new movie, but. Um, it was giving us a lot all at once, right? So mm-hmm. you have all of these new characters that you need to get invested in and try to understand. You have this world that they've created that we don't quite know what time frame it is. Something's a little, it's not quite Earth, right? Something's mm-hmm. a little bit different. So you're trying to investigate that. And then really quickly in the movie, they throw you into a different world when they go on this travel, uh, this exploration to try to save Pando, this energy source. And they find themselves in this new strange world, hence the title of the movie. And so then you're automatically trying to figure out a whole new world as well. So there's a lot going on in the brain, in my brain at this time of like, yeah. I I can't keep up with the story and the characters and the location and where am I? What am I seeing? So I think it that's what made it suffer for me a little bit. And I my my fix for this would have been, I wonder if this would have been more successful if these characters had started as like a TV show and then this yeah. was a movie afterwards, right? So if you just give us a little bit more time with the characters and then put them in an outlandish space, that might have been more successful. The way you were talking about with the Marvel's uh, movies can be sort of hard to wrap your head around yeah. but they did a really good job in early days of marvels of slowly introducing these characters so that once we knew who they were they could throw anything at us and we were, were ready for it this i feel yeah. like they did it all in one two-hour movie and it was just for me just a scotch too much if that makes sense i definitely agree with you i also First of all, I think it would have been amazing for this to be a TV show, and then we get a movie at the end of the TV show. Um, I think so. They could have really ran with it. Yeah. I think the issue that I had is that we didn't get to enjoy and build out truly the outside world before we dove into the inside world. 100%. And I also wasn't sure if... Are we on Earth? Are we not on Earth? You know, that's yeah. where it kind of lost me a little bit. And maybe that was up to uh, up for our own interpretation, right? But I think if if we could have seen where the world was before mm. this discovery and mm. then see how the rest of the town interacts after the inventions and after the discovery, I think that the whole entire movie would have made a little bit more sick since like, why yeah. was it such a big deal that we can only use this new power source? Like, were we on the brink of extinction beforehand? And that's why we were exploring. I think if they yeah. would have fleshed that out a little bit more, or maybe if we would have gotten a two parter movie and the bulk of this part of the movie would have been in the second movie, then I think I would have been a little bit more bought in. I fully agree. But, with that. I did enjoy so much, and you're totally correct in that this was a Disney movie that did not follow kind of the only, I feel like the only type of Disney formula that it followed was a dead parent 
and a sidekick <laughs> animal. And even those two items were done very creatively and unlike Disney had done before. Mm. Um, with the fact that number one, like our, the young character, the, the youngest character in the movie, that wasn't the person who lost a parent. It was the parent who had lost a parent. I thought that that was a really interesting thing to dive into. Mm. And then secondly, the sidekick animal was kind of an organism. Mm-hmm. Question mark. And sure. amoeba. And I kind of like that too. That was cool. Yeah. Well, and we also got, but yeah, the, the other sidekick that the, that the, the son was playing around with. Yeah. That was the main sidekick. Oh, and then there, yeah, the there's dog. also the dog in the movie too, who was a big part of the movie for sure. Yeah. And a three-legged dog. I I want to know the story behind why a three-legged dog. I, I loved it. I loved seeing sort of versatility and showing this, this um, non-nuclear family. Uh, right. I was just interested in like, what's the story behind that? I want to know. I want to know more about this, but I will say yeah, I agree with you 100% on I, I would have loved for this to have been a two part movie, like exploring the yep. world as it is and understanding what this world is. Because like I said before, they I feel like they just threw us too quickly into the strange world as opposed to exploring this. Where are we? When are we? What time is it? Why don't they have electricity already? I, I was sort right. of lost in that and I wanted to know more about it before they threw us into this other strange world. Yes. Like, are we in the future? Are we right. in the past? Are we living right now? Mm-hmm. Um, I is had this Earth even? Is it even is this Earth? Earth? I don't yeah. even know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I will say that had it going for it in the best of ways is the just the diversity of this movie is incredible. Absolutely incredible. incredible. And yeah. the, something that I loved about the diversity was that the diversity was just naturally there and not central to the story arc. 100%. This is like textbook how you do diversity really, really well. It's just yeah. let it be a part of the story because we are all just naturally part of diverse groups of people. Mm-hmm. But the diversity or the um, the differences in identity aren't the outright talked about in our friend groups and things like that, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think that that it was really cool in the fact mm-hmm. that this was our first like out queer character in mm-hmm. Disney history. And mm-hmm. he blatantly was like my boyfriend. And I, I thought that that was so cool. And what a cool thing for um, our first like real out queer character in Disney um, animated history to be a BIPOC queer character, mm-hmm. also voiced by a BIPOC queer person. Mm-hmm. Um, that is huge, I feel like. Um, and I think that there was a lot of intention that was put behind it. Also, this is, I think, the first mixed race uh, animated character that I've seen on the Disney big screen, mm. I think. Am I correct in that? That I, I can't verify that officially that it that yeah i don't i don't quite know but i mean there were so many different backgrounds and nationalities going on you know what i mean it was just yeah Yeah. absolutely astounding and it was all yes and diversity you know what i mean just like yes and yeah why not (laughs) um I loved that and i think it is and i think that this is the first um mixed race family to yeah. be shown in a Disney animated movie too. Our Tweedles are going to call me out, but I just know I was really excited to see a family that somewhat looked like mine on the big screen. I thought that was really yeah. cool. Um, yeah. My mom is half white, half black, but she's white passing. And so to the, to the average person, they would think that we, that I was, you know, just a straight up mixed person too. <laughs> um, but it, I really enjoyed that. And I think that it's time, especially given where we are in history, there's more mixed families than ever, especially Mm -hmm. in America. So why not celebrate that and showcase it more in animated features? So I think that that's really cool. Or at least like make more movies, uh, Cinderella, Rogers and Hammerstein, Cinderella style, where it's very race (laughs) agnostic. You know, I think that that's something that's really cool too. Um, Let's dive into generational trauma let's talk about it 
Patrick, I Why felt not? like there was there was a lot of I hadn't seen this much generational trauma in a kids movie since Encanto, pretty much, and because you know, like there was like, and the dad in the movie, you know, Searcher, it it felt like he had all of this underlying anxiety, mm. all of this underlying insecurity, and it stemmed from uh, his relationship with his father, and then therefore he was. Uh, affecting his relationship with his own son. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we got yeah, it, therapy, you know? It, it reminded me a little bit of sort of the flipped gender version of the plot line in Turning Red a little bit with, yes. mm-hmm. with the mother and her generational trauma and passing that on to her child and expectations and all this stuff. And so it was interesting to view it from a male point of view as well because yeah. you don't you don't get a lot of stories in Disney, at least, of uh, of male characters exploring their emotions and diving For sure. into, into their trauma and diving into like things that they may need therapy about and so yeah. that was i was like oh kudos to you because the women in this movie were the strong like steadfast we got this we have a plan whether or not right. they were on one side or the other of that plan they had they were they were deeply rooted in their convictions whereas the right. men in this movie were all over the map with like i don't know where i am i don't know what i'm t- i don't know how i feel about this and maybe that's okay to not know how i feel about it and yeah it was great And I felt like that was honestly the most realistic part of this movie that reflects real life is women being the ones that are like on the plan and know what's going on and being resourceful and brave while men are going to do everything but be direct about their feelings. Right. Yes. (laughs) You know, but that's another story for another day. Um, But yeah, I absolutely love that. I loved... um, you know, kind of the underlying messages of the fact that the earth, we got to take care of it. It's the only earth mm-hmm. that we have. And yeah. we got to come up with some plans for alternative energy resources. And mm. just because we have to look for a different plan doesn't mean that that's a bad thing. Um, yeah. There was specifically a quote that was said in the movie that I wrote down when I heard it, whenever I was rewatching it. And um, it says, though we can't live in the past, we can make a brighter future. Mm. And I really loved that because yeah. it is a good reminder. I think a lot of fear when it comes to change is um, the concept of we can't change because this is the way that we've always lived. Mm. But we oftentimes forget about the the thought that well what if the change that we make actually makes life easier and better for all of us right sure yeah and going back to bob taking his shirt off that's the reason (laughs) why inclusion is so important bob and woke (laughs) stories are so important is because the more people that are included in any given story, the more easy it is to celebrate all of us. And the right. easier that it is to celebrate all of us means that all of us are going to therefore be more happy. <laughs> well, and it just makes the story more accessible to more people. As yeah, well. it makes I mean, the story isn't that more the goal? accessible. Isn't that the goal at the end of the day to make yeah. sure? I feel like Disney's mention is to make sure that little kids across the world get to see themselves in movies. And we have little kids that are mixed race. We have little kids with two dads and two moms. We have little kids <laughs> who don't have parents at all. So let them be seen too. Amen. But, Amen to yeah. that. So going back to the environmental plot line a little bit as well, I, I did enjoy it. Um, I will say, and this is interesting coming from me because usually I am... I want Disney to be a little bit more subtle sometimes, those messages, but I felt like mm-hmm. they had an opportunity to be more overt in that message for this movie. Yeah. It almost felt like they were dancing around the environmental plot line where they could have leaned into it a little more heavily, like I the agree. issue of renewable resources, like the issue we have to take care of our planet. It was there, you, but it wasn't as main of a plot line as I as I wanted to be with a title like Strange World, I kind of yeah. assumed it was going to be more of an environmental movie and I was ready for it. And when I didn't get that, I was a little I have to say I was a little bit let down by that part of it, if that makes sense. Like but I think this is the larger issue with me for the movie. Not to say I didn't like the movie. I just thought there's so much going on. It needed to be two different movies or this could have been a, a series instead where they explore these different avenues. I agree. It was almost done too quickly. You know what I think about? I think that this movie could have been really successful if maybe even 
Because I agree, we kind of danced around um, making sure that we were being aware of environmentalism and things like that when we could have just hit it Mm. head on. I would have really appreciated this movie. Granted, I'm changing the storyline around completely, but I think (laughs) that this could have been a really good Wally prequel. A oh, really, interesting. really good yeah. Wally prequel. So like the family is like one of the last families that hasn't gone to the space station yet because they're sure. explorers. They've been tasked by the president to explore the conditions of which the country is in, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. Yeah. I think that that could have been really cool. With that said, I did really enjoy the Lewis and Clark energy behind it of like, <laughs> yeah. you know, explorers. We, that the world feels a lot smaller than it used to because of the internet. And so Mm. I like that energy of like, not colonialism, because that's bad, but like, Mm -hmm. like, we're going to go explore this new space, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, again, I think you're totally, I was going to say the same thing. I I liked the adventurers um, energy of it. I almost wished, and I, it's weird that they didn't do this, lean into the adventurer's clubness of yeah. it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like like mm-hmm. a little bit the jungle cruise and a little bit that like cause the whole SEA, <gasps> the I mean they oh, could have that would have been so good. Don't you think they could have leaned in just to just give us a little hint of like maybe yeah. these the the Clade family is part of the SEA or something. And yeah. And maybe it was. Maybe there's an Easter egg in there somewhere that I missed, but I was looking for it and I wanted it so bad to happen. And so Again, I, there are just so many fun parts that I wish that they had leaned in a little bit more, but I can see how they couldn't have because there was so much happening in the movie that if you yeah. lean in somewhere, you have to lean out somewhere. And so, yeah, I, I, I think I just need more of of this of this family um, in a different venue. I almost also thought, could this have been a live action movie instead and done some interesting things there? I wouldn't have been mad at that either. No, I think that if, especially if we pulled in like maybe a director of, of a formal Marvel movie or something like that, yeah. that could have been interesting because this movie did give quantum mania esque <laughs> yes. energy. And Very so that. I think it it has a lot of potential. I'm really yeah. hopeful that maybe some time from now people will revisit it and people will yeah. grow to love it. And then we eventually get a resurgence back into this world and maybe either a sequel yeah. or maybe even um, a, a TV show. But uh, I think that we could have – it's almost like that this had some of the genetics of – also, speaking of Atlantis, it kind of had some of the genetics of Atlantis mm-hmm. in it too, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, yep. Yeah, I think that that's where I'm at. Fair enough. Yeah, I, I overall, I definitely liked this movie. It's not, it's not currently sitting in like my top ten all time Disney movies. Um, yeah, it would be a movie I would go back to and watch again. And I definitely want more from the characters, but but none of the characters as it stands right now stood out as like, oh, I hope I see them in the park someday. You know what I mean? They're just I they're agree. not really that. It's not that movie of right. Disney IP is going to do anything with it. I could see maybe if it was, uh, I don't know, a Soren like thing or a Avatar like thing right. going through this this strange world would be kind of neat. But I don't see Disney leaning in heavily on Strange World IP wise. I hope that they turn it into some shorts on Disney Plus or something or yeah. books maybe even. Who who knows? I I would yeah. get into that, but. I do think it's worth watching. It's a worth it's worthwhile yeah. watch. It's worthwhile for your investment. And I'm interested to know what other people think about it too. One hundred percent. My final thought as well, I specifically yeah. wrote this down in my notes. I really hope the lack of kind of uh box office success from this movie doesn't affect Jake Gyllenhaal and Gabrielle Union being <laughs> cast again as animated parents, either together or separately. Sure. I found myself loving just listening to both of their voices. Like there's something Mm. about both of their voices, their vocal quality, the pitch at which they speak that is so Mm -hmm. soothing and reassuring that I really want to see them as parents in other Disney productions soon. I would agree with that. Like across the board, I feel like the entire cast was really well suited for this movie. Um, Mm -hmm. They just had very natural, soothing tones, um, and Mm -hmm. they just are all great actors in their own rights as well. And so I felt like this movie had all the right makings of a great movie. It just 
it just didn't hit as hard as I wanted mm-hmm. it to. And I remember wanting it to hit really hard and it, it didn't quite get there for me, but it, it got somewhere at least for me yeah. <laughs> in the grand scheme of things. So on our scales of uh, diversity and inclusion on one to five, what are you giving Strange World? 17. 17,000 points for diversity mm-hmm. and inclusion. Uh, mm-hmm. on, the queer, on the queer scale, one to five, where does this movie fit in queer vernacular? Oh. I'm going to say five again. Um, Mm -hmm. We didn't talk about this a lot, but uh, number one, the queerness being featured, but not a central part of the story, just Mm -hmm. as being to be a part of everyday life like everybody else. I thought that that was so beautiful. And also, um, I loved that um, Jabuki's uh, love interest also was giving a little bit of androgyny in there, Mm -hmm. kind of like... Mm -hmm clothing and hair choices so i sure thought that, that was very inclusive in fact and i loved it so i'm gonna say yeah. 17 out of five <laughs> for um inclusion and diversity i'm gonna yeah. say 10 out of five for queerness got you okay fair fair enough yeah i i mean i feel like i i definitely thought to myself this is how you do a queer character in a Disney movie where you're not mm-hmm. you're just inc- you're just including a queer character mm-hmm. you're not making it a, a a whole plot point it was great mm-hmm. although it's sort of our minds here's where i went with it our minds sort of make it a plot point because we're so mm-hmm. not used to seeing that unfortunately like when yeah. when um the dad was talking to his dad about um his son's crush on another boy I feel like all of America went, oh, well, this is going to be a discussion. And it wasn't. It was just yeah. like, oh, great. And, and here's how you that. flirt with somebody. And that was like, this is exactly how these stories need to go. I know that's not everybody's story and that's not everybody's yeah. truth. But until we start normalizing, it's it's never going to be everybody's truth, you know? So I, I, I say well done. Yeah. I agree. And, you know, I think that... This is something that I feel uh, very much so in parallel with my queerness and with my blackness is that Mm. you we oftentimes want representation, but Mm -hmm. at the same time, we don't want it to be about our pain or Mm -hmm. our sorrow. But then when the pain and the sorrow isn't talked about is specifically a pain and coming a lot of coming out stories and things like that. There's also Mm. heat that one gets from that too. So it's like, sure. It's it's almost like it's a lose lose situation because when it comes to representation, (laughs) because you do want to make it just like an everyday thing, but you also don't want to discount the struggles of the people. And there's no answer. I feel like personally, well, I think the answer is like there's room for both stories in different yeah. venues. You you don't yeah. have to tell all stories in at one movie. You can tell mm-hmm. like there there is room for Black Panther, right? And mm-hmm. and like having a story about blackness and then there's room for Strange World in which that's not yes. the story. It just is diverse, you know? Yep. Ooh, I love that. And you need both. <laughs> and you need both. Like both you have to be represented, both. but representation mm-hmm. has to be included in both as well. So like that's how you do it, in, in my opinion. But well, okay, so last but not least, Gaze Do the D, one out of five. Overall, this movie for you. Is it a one? Is it a two? Is it a three, a four, or a five? I'm gonna say a one out of five. I'm gonna give it a two and a half. Um Interesting. I, okay. I, I, did enjoy myself. I loved mm-hmm. all of the representation. I think it set like a new precedence for representation in animated films. Mm-hmm. The storyline did lose me several times, though. So I think it has a ways to go. So I'm going to say two and a half. What about you? 100%. I was, a, I was literally absolutely going to say two and a half for this one as well. Mm-hmm. Basically for the same reasons. I liked the movie. There was nothing wrong with the movie. It just... I yeah I think I I already said it a thousand times it just needed yeah. uh, either to your point be two movies or I, it would have been a really good television show instead yeah. but I don't know that it's going to be a classic Disney movie that everyone revisits and it's going to be in the parks all the time unfortunately no no I don't think so I think <laughs> this is going to be one of those obscure ones but that's all right that's okay there's room for those two and it, it'll be somebody's favorite it wasn't yeah. mine but I do like the movie for sure it's it's yeah. absolutely worth having in the Disney canon. 100%. Um, interested to hear from our Tweedles. Um, 
If you yes. loved this movie, if this is one of you, well, I want to hear from everybody. If you love yes. this movie, if you absolutely hated it, <laughs> if you're like, what movie are we talking about? Even though I'm 45 <laughs> right. minutes into this podcast episode, let us know. <laughs> um, because I think good art is art that causes conversations like this. So sure, be a yeah. part of the conversation. Please do reach out to us on the Instagram at GDTD podcast or send us a voice memo or an email at info at gaze to the d dot com here's something interesting in my head going into this movie i i have a big crush on jake gyllenhaal and mm-hmm. it was interesting <laughs> I, it was hard for me to separate like oh hello daddy hello, mm-hmm. every once in a while with searcher but but on this flip side no one in the movie was like overtly sexualized in this you know what i mean no. they just they were in my head because I overtly sexualized Jake Gyllenhaal, I think, is the, is the problem with me. Listen, or the solution. I relate with me. I don't know. I relate, and because it was Jake Gyllenhaal, in my mind, I think it made Searcher kind of adorable. <laughs> you know? I was like, yeah. oh, Searcher. Okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'd let him Searcher me. You know what I mean? Oh. You know oh. 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 <laughs> All you need is a little Jaeger. What? And if the beat live, you know, little Patrick made it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you're you. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're producing I, all the top hits of women in rap, you know? I truly am. I truly am. People say that a lot about me. <laughs> you said that. I truly am. <laughs> That was so funny. That was the funniest response to that. That I mean, <laughs> you're. Oh man! Why would I? Why would I say no to that? I'll take. That why would for I say sure. no? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. You said we're going to Gag City with Nicki Minaj. Um, <laughs> I don't know how many barbs are even, or how many Tweedles are barbs, but y- y'all probably don't know what I'm even talking about. But it's okay. <laughs> Anyhow, um, Patrick, I think it's time. Yes. It's time for some quick D. Let's do some quick D. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's do this. Opening up my Instagram to see who wrote us some questions. And we have actually not a lot of people wrote in this time, which is fine because it helps me out because I if there's only one there, I'm, that's what I'm going to read. So right, perfect. let's do it. <laughs> we have, drumroll please, at Steve Achu has a question Achu for Quick Achu D Achu asking... What Disney IP would make a beautiful stage show? Oh, it has to be beautiful, my friend. And interesting in this in in stage show, like that doesn't have to be a musical. What if there was a Disney play out there? You oh, know what I mean? okay. okay. I'm with you, Patrick. You're getting really you. like conceptual here. Do you already Thank have you your so answer? Much. I sure don't. I really don't. But <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> Do you know what? Actually, I would really love to see is a stage version, a good stage version. I've seen a lot of not great ones of Disney's version of Alice in Wonderland, I think could be oh, really cute. That would be really, really cute. I agree with you. I have yeah. seen some travesty stage productions of Ab- Alice in Wonderland as well mm-hmm. that were more mm-hmm. scary than anything. Oh, sure. Yeah, fair, fair, so, fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. I definitely feel you there. Um, if I had to pick that would lead to being a beautiful stage show that hasn't yeah, it has already be beautiful. been a stage show. I didn't, I didn't show it because it's already, Alice Winter has been on the stage before, but right, but not I was li- good. I was literally about to say, um, but th- I was literally about to say Tarzan, but I, I remember Tarzan was a stage show. It's been there. It's been there. It might come back too. Who can say? Um, I don't know. This is this is the first <laughs> quick deed that I didn't have like an answer for immediately. Like this is slowly becoming a a medium D. Um, <laughs> medium D. <laughs> a sensible D. <laughs> I'm disgusting. Um, we're not adventurous day. We're sensible D's. You know what? Encanto would be a beautiful stage show. I'm going to go with that. Wouldn't it? 
I would love to that see that on stage. That would be an amazing th- ensemble I think they need cast, to do that. right? Yeah, yeah, that would be good. And the house is a set. That would be cool. Yes, I want to see them do that as... People are going to come for me, but like, I wouldn't be mad if they replaced the Beauty and the Beast sing-along in Disney World with Encanto. I agree. It's time. I'm with you. <laughs> you said you were like, it's time. I agree. It's time. <laughs> come 100%. for me. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I said what I said. No, I definitely agree with you. I think it would be, be so good. Like, And I also, I know that there's been rumors for a long time about a Columbia um, pavilion. Um, with the mm-hmm. arepas and everything, I think that it's been confirmed that they're going to build the house in uh, Animal Kingdom, which also makes sense. But I think that I'm with you there. I'm I'm interested in Kanto. Um, yeah, I think you win. You win this round, my friend. I was also thinking Oliver and Company, but that could go very cats very quickly. <laughs> oh my god, I would, I would pay so much money to and see we don't need cats reimagined as oliver and company <laughs> i just the thought of it terrifies me but georgina would be so slay there you go you know why should we worry why should we care <laughs> there know? we go Patrick. there we go. there it is <laughs> i think you know what's funny is i think that i've talked about oliver Co- oliver and company the past like four episodes that i've been on so maybe that's something that i need to work out like maybe i need to just like watch the movie i think so i think we need to explore this uh in another episode of why oliver and company is ingrained that, in your brain that'll be my next episode take two oliver oliver and brother company oliver and brother bear company brother oliver and company <laughs> Brother Oliver and Bears. <laughs> that sounds like I, another type of film. I would have stopped recording. No, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, y'all, that will do it for this episode of Gays Do the D. Thanks for listening. To become a patron of the podcast, visit our website at gaysdothed.com slash donate. For a donation of any amount, you can receive exclusive Gays Do the D content and help us to continue to bring you the very best Disney news and discussion. Continue the conversation after this episode on Facebook and Instagram at GDTD Podcast. Also, submit your questions or show ideas to info at gazetothed.com. Have a great week, everyone, and see you real soon. And I need to get it in.